This is a painting of the uh, Second Continental Congress voting on the U.S. Declaration of Independence. And I like to think, just before they voted on that very important decision, they broke out in this song. And we'll never be royal, royal. And today what we're going to take a look at is this idea that they were so fearful of creating a strong central government that the first government of the United States is going to be the complete opposite of that and is going to be extremely weak. And this lecture is on the Articles of Confederation. Thank you for checking out another video and let's get started. So we all know 1776, Declaration of Independence, the American Revolution had already been going on with the battles of Lexington and Concord over a year prior. But what most people don't know is the first government of the United States is in fact the Articles of Confederation. And a lot of stuff happened. So the Articles of Confederation was actually approved by the Continental Congress in 1777. It was adopted, written by John Dickinson, but there was a delay in ratifying it by the states. And it all came down to land out west. Some states like Virginia and Massachusetts had claimed a bunch of land stretching from the East Coast all the way to the Pacific Ocean as part of their colonial charters. So states like Maryland and Pennsylvania, who didn't have these land claims, basically said, we're not ratifying this new national government until that land is relinquished. And basically, the Articles don't officially get ratified until 1781, which is wild to think about because that's eight months before the final major battle of the American Revolution, Yorktown. So in 1781, they're official, but they pretty much are in effect from the beginning moments of the American Revolution. Now, of course, in 1783, the Treaty of Paris ends the whole thing, but... 1786, a convention at Annapolis is going to take place where they're going to decide that these articles perhaps aren't so great after all. So let's take a look at how this timeline unfolded, why ultimately the Articles of Confederation, our first national government, will no longer be in force. And there's really three categories I'm going to break this down, and I'm going to let my girls from SWV, Sisters with Voices, break those categories down. We got political weaknesses, economic weaknesses, and foreign policy weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation. And if we're going to break this down, first, the political. This is a constitution. It's creating our first national government. And if you think strong, you think Arnold Schwarzenegger with the big biceps, the Articles is the complete opposite. It is a weak federal government. And it's something about the way the Articles did what it did that made it weak. For instance, there was no executive branch, no president. You know, they had been dealing with King George in Parliament. That gave them a bad opinion of government, their experiences with England, so they don't create an executive branch. In fact, there's no judicial national court system either. So it's a one-branch government, just a legislative branch, a unicameral Congress, one house Congress. Every state, irregardless of size, so the biggest state, Virginia, and one of the smaller states, Rhode Island, they all had one vote. It didn't matter the size of your state, one vote per state. To change the Articles of Confederation required unanimous consent. Every state had to agree to make any changes to it, and to pass a law, it required a supermajority. You needed nine out of 13 states to agree, which is going to be extremely difficult to do. And to kind of really kind of sum up why politically it was so weak, weak in terms of not being a powerful federal government or powerful central government, is the fact that it actually said each state retains its sovereignty, freedom, and independence. So these states were sovereign. They were free to kind of act on their own. And that's exactly what they did. This was a confederation. 
Now, you need to kind of understand something about, you know, government in general, which is this idea of federalism. You know, the idea of federalism is that power is shared between a federal and state governments. And under the Articles of Confederation, there was a federal government, but the arrangement looked more like this. The federal government was so powerless when you compare it to the power that the states had. So politically, it was weak because of their experiences with England. They intentionally created this weak government. Now here's the other thing, and the other kind of really thing that created difficulties in the 1780s was the economic weaknesses. You know, they have no desire to hand over power to a strong national government, so the Articles, for example, couldn't get the money right. La, la, yeah. la, la, wait till I give my money right. For instance, Congress could not impose taxes. It had no taxation powers. In fact, it could ask states to donate money to the national cause on a voluntary basis, but it could not tax. And as a result, you have war debts going unpaid. We owed a lot of money as a result of the American Revolution, and we couldn't pay it. And another thing that kind of reveals the weakness of, weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation, Congress could not regulate commerce. So interstate trade, trade between states, wasn't uh, regulated by the national government. It did not have the power to do so. And so you have all these different states, um, in some cases, imposing tariffs or taxes on other states, which made for a very confusing system and created a very difficult climate economically. In fact, money, different states were printing their own money that was basically worthless. So you have all these problems economically, and throughout the 1780s, you have a post-war depression. The economy is basically in the toilet, and in the 1780s, the central government, the national government, was nearly bankrupt. Um, and so you have those economic weaknesses. Now, add the political, the economic, and then you look at the world America kind of had to operate in. In 1783, all that area in green is us. Our borders go from the Atlantic all the way to the Mississippi River. But there were all sorts of dangers in the world, including our former mother country, England. Danger! Danger! We had all sorts of issues out west. For instance, the British were building forts up in this area, the old northwest, um, near the Great Lakes. And under the Treaty of Paris, they were supposed to vacate those forts. Um, the British were disrupting American trade by dumping uh, very cheap British manufactured goods into the United States. And American manufacturers couldn't compete. Um, they closed off trade to the U.S. in the West Indies, that very profitable trade in places like Jamaica and Barbados that's closed to the former colonies. They're also trading with Native Americans in the, in, on U.S. soil, and they're involved in the fur trade and other things, but they're giving guns to those natives, which in turn could and would be used against Americans later on. So there's all sorts of problems with England, and the Articles of Confederation, the national government, is powerless to force England to honor the Treaty of Paris signed in 1783. Now, to be fair, the U.S. wasn't living up to its end of the treaty either. They were supposed to repay loyalists their property and pay off pre-war debts, and both those aspects of the treaty weren't honored by the U.S., it wasn't just England that was causing danger. We also had danger coming from Spain. Danger! Danger! In fact, Spain's down over here and, and ha occupies a huge part of the continent. And there was this kind of dispute over the Mississippi River. And in 1784, Spain basically closes off U.S. access to the mouth of the Mississippi. Um, and this is a huge blow to trade in the region. If you're one of these Kentucky or Tennessee pioneers, you need that river access to get your goods to market. And Spain closes it off. Says, U.S., you can't use it. And then, of course, what about our old friend France? You know, after the Battle of Saratoga, they pledged their open support to us, fighting, helping us in the American Revolution. France is going to cause... Danger! Danger! Problems. In fact... France is a little ticked off at us, too. They want their loans paid back from the American Revolution. And they start restri restricting American trade in the West Indies as well. 
So you have all these problems, and really, roughly half of American territory is kind of threatened by either Spain or England or native settlements who are cooperating or trading with our European rivals. And America's in a very weak state internationally during this period under the Articles of Confederation. And then you add in another element, which is pirates. Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. We pillage, we plunder, we rifle, and loot, drink up behind his yo ho. In fact, the Barbary pirates in northern Africa, you had all this kind of Barbary coast region, and all these different areas were kind of under the control and influence of these different pirate groups. And American ships traveling through the area um, were constantly harassed, sailors were taken hostage, we call this impressment, um, goods were stolen, and the Barbary pirates are doing this to the United States because we're weak. We're too weak to fight, we're too poor to bribe them to leave us alone, and that's what England had done. Um, they either bribed the Barbary pirates or used the powerful navy to, to prevent their harassment, and we don't have England protecting us any longer. Before we had Mama to go to, no more. So you had the Barbary pirates causing problems for the United States. So you have these kind of three aspects, political, economic, and foreign policy, and then you have internal problems going on, where the people in the United States are actually rebelling against the government. Shays Rebellion, 1787 in Western Massachusetts. You're going to have farmers rebel under the leadership of an American Revolutionary veteran, Daniel Shay. We're going to cover that in another lecture. Hit the link and you'll get taken to there on the internets. But basically, Shays Rebellion, farmers angry over taxes and foreclosures, rebel against the government. And the Articles is too weak to really effectively crush this rebellion. The state of Massachusetts has to be the one to hire a private militia. And a lot of people in the nation, especially the elite, the property owners, are worried about this mob backcountry resistance and, you know, this mobocracy. And people start saying, you know what? We need to fix these problems this weak central government. Now, before we go, are we a pessimist or an optimist? And the reality was there was something that was extremely successful under the Articles of Confederation, and that is the settlement of this area right there, the Northwest Territory. And we're going to cover this in another lecture in greater detail. Click the link. But in short, these two acts, these two laws, the Northwest Ordinance of 1787 and the Latin Ordinance of 1785 is going to allow for the systematic, orderly settlement of this entire region. And it's done under the Articles of Confederation, its greatest accomplishment, and it's going to allow for this land to uh, turn into territories and eventually states. It's going to allow for public education. It's going to ban slavery, and we'll cover that in greater detail. Click that button. And here's the big idea. Many felt that the Articles of Confederation were unable to deal effectively with the challenges facing the young nation. And we go from 1776, the Declaration of Independence, creating a new government, to a group of people meeting. In 1786, Annapolis. And at Annapolis, five states and delegates, not many, but five do. And a guy by the name of Alexander Hamilton says, how about we meet again? And they are going to meet again in 1787 in Philadelphia. And at this meeting in Philadelphia, the Constitutional Convention will scrap the Articles of Confederation and replace it with a much more powerful federal government. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Check out the other videos on my channel. Subscribe to Joe's Productions. Click my face and you'll subscribe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Peace.